scrambled eggs. The bridge across the river needs repair, the fat controller told the engines. I shall have to make a weight limit to cross it for a while. Percy and Daisy will be all right, and Toby too, but Thomas is too heavy. Thomas looked anxious. How would you like to go and help Edward, suggested the fat controller. Can Annie and Clarabel come, asked Thomas. The fat controller shook his head. They'll be needed here, I'm afraid, he said. Daisy can't carry all your passengers on her own. Percy promised to look after Annie and Clarabel, but they were sorry to see Thomas go. To cheer Thomas up, Edward took him to see Bill and Ben, the twin engines who lived at the China Clay Harbour. Oh dear, not another blue engine, said Bill cheekily. First Edward, then Donald and Douglas, and now... Don't forget Gordon, interrupted Ben. He came here once by mistake, so he said. I don't think he enjoyed it much, he added innocently. The twins both chuckled, remembering. No, but seriously, Edward, said Bill, why doesn't the fat controller paint engines a proper colour, like us, for instance? Thomas let off steam indignantly. Let me tell you, he began. All right, you two, laughed Edward. Go and move those trucks, or there won't be room for any more. Bill and Ben, unabashed, went off happily. You just don't have to take them too seriously, explained Edward. Thomas smiled ruefully. I wish I knew how you deal with them, he said. Near the harbour, the line crossed a lane. The crossing had no gates. The lane led to a farm which made butter and supplied eggs and milk to shops in the town. One morning, the farmer had difficulty starting his lorry. He did it at last, but the lorry jerked along in fits and starts. The farmer was worried about his load of milk and butter and eggs. That milk will be churned to butter soon, he muttered to himself as he neared the level crossing. The lorry lurched across the rails. The back wheels were just clear when its engine made a noise like a tired sheep and stopped. The back of the lorry was still jutting out over the railway line. The farmer struggled to start it again, but it would not go. He had just got down to telephone for help when he heard a train approaching. Thomas wasn't going fast. When he saw the lorry, he set his brakes hard, but he couldn't stop. He hit the lorry with a loud crash. The force of the blow spun the lorry round. Splintered wood flew everywhere, and eggs, butter, and milk were catapulted over Thomas. Ugh! he exclaimed and stopped. Just look at my poor old lorry, said the farmer, emerging from behind the hedge where he'd been sheltering. What a way to make an omelette! The driver made sure that Thomas wasn't hurt, then stood back and surveyed the mess. He began to laugh. It's not funny, said Thomas crossly. An egg yolk trickled down his nose and burst on his buffer. You're not standing where I am, said his driver. You look just like a scrambled egg, Thomas. Well, if a scrambled egg feels as sticky and wet as I do, then it's very uncomfortable, said Thomas. Please clean me. Both driver and fireman tried hard, but the heat of Thomas's boiler had cooked the eggs, and they were stuck fast. Sorry, Thomas, said his driver at last. We can't block the line any longer. We shall have to go on. At the end of the line, Thomas was taken to Bill and Ben's yard to be cleaned. The twins were there. Hello, said Ben. What's this? Must be a new engine, said Bill. Ben inspected the arrival carefully. No, Bill, he said. That's not a new engine. It's Thomas. But it's our colour, Ben, and Thomas doesn't think our colour is proper for an engine. They heard a grinding noise. Are your joints stiff, Bill? asked Ben. But it wasn't Bill's joints. It was Thomas gnashing his teeth.